And we are live. Welcome back with Murphy Mac to another episode of the Fitness Beginner Podcast, where we help you get started on your fitness journey. What is up, folks? I know y'all are thinking, what are you doing going live? Today is Sunday. You normally do the podcast on Monday. Well, I decided I think I'm going to switch it up. I'm going to try to switch it up. We'll see if I like it this way. But I decided I want to start posting the updated podcast on Monday instead of Tuesday like I've been doing. So that means I got to record it on Sunday the day before. So I'm going to start recording the podcast Sunday. So as y'all know, I go live doing the podcast. We do it live so y'all can tune in if you want to live. And then I'll take that recording and I'll upload it on the podcasting platforms the next day. So we're going to start doing it on Sunday nights. We're going to go live. Uh, I go live on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Twitch, and LinkedIn. So if you want to, y'all can tune in Sunday nights, probably around this time, 8 o'clock. Um, but yeah, that way I can upload the, the podcast version on Monday morning. And I want to do that so y'all can start your week off right on Monday with some inspiration, some motivation to go on Monday. Because I know that's when everybody likes to get back in the rhythm of things is on Monday because it's the beginning of the week. And I totally understand. I'm the same way. So I decided I wanted to upload the podcast on Monday. So that means we got to start recording it on Sunday. So that's what we're doing here. So I'm going to switch it up. We're going to try it like this for a few weeks and see if I like it. If it works well with my schedule, because the reason I originally changed it to Monday is because it worked better in my schedule back then. But now it's a little, it's a little later, and I got uh, more time on Sundays to actually record the podcast. So we're gonna try it here. Y'all, let me know if this is an issue with y'all. It shouldn't be, but moving on. Uh, I want to say big shout out to my mom. Yesterday she did her very first triathlon. So shout out to her. She did the Brett Robinson triathlon in Gulf Shores. Um, she did a sprint, so it's actually. It's a, it's kind of like the beginner level distance triathlon you can do, but hey, it's still a triathlon and she still did it. So shout out to her and she absolutely crushed her time. She beat her goal by a lot. So that was good for her. Proud of her. She killed it. She's been doing all kinds of cool things. She's run, ran two half marathons, now a triathlon. Who knows what she's going to do next? And y'all all wonder where, where I get it from, where I do all these crazy things. I get it from my mom. That's where I get it from. Because she inspires me to do things. I inspire her to do things. And just that's just kind of a relationship we have. But yeah, shout out to her for doing that. That was uh, that was pretty cool. I, I ain't going to lie. It was weird being on the other side of the course, though. Like, I I didn't like being on the, in the fans. You know, I wanted to be on, on the course. I wanted to be out there with them running. I wanted to do it with them. It felt different uh, not being out there. Because I did that same triathlon last year when I was prepping for the Ironman. I actually did that same one. Um, so yeah, it was a little different, but hey, you best believe the next one we do, I'm going to be in there. I'm going to do it. Y'all best believe we got to, uh, and that kind of leads us into what the podcast topic is going to be about today. And that is, there is a half marathon coming up in January that my wife is talking about doing and she wants to do it and she's never trained for anything like this. So that's going to lead me to the podcast. I was telling her this, we were talking about training and we were talking about how you prepare for it in your preparation. And I was telling her, you you can't just dive in head first and try to like go all in. There's there's progression. You have to build up on it. You have to start at the bottom and work your way up. There's there's levels to this. And you can't just like you can't try to dive in on level five. You gotta start at level one, you know. You gotta get there. So I was talking to her about it and it and it triggered my mind. I was like, hey, that's a great podcast topic. We're gonna talk about how to start your fitness journey or like a race preparation, whatever it is you're preparing for, without going overboard, like without overdoing it. Because there's there's right ways to do it. And I feel like most people, once they decide to go all in, they're, they're so motivated and pumped up that they kind of overdo it. And this leads to burnout really quick. And they end up quitting. So like, why, why go all in on something and overdo it if you're not going to be doing it a month from now, two months from now, or even six months from now, or a year from now? Like, you got to... Find something that's that's uh, sustainable and stick with that. And I think starting slower, which will make your results take longer, but that's okay. Like if your results take longer, but you're still doing it later a year down the road, then hey, that's that's better than trying to get results quicker, but you're not doing it no more a year down the road. You know what I'm saying? So that's what we're gonna talk about today. We're gonna talk about how to like avoid burnout, how to do it the right way, take the proper steps. So first and foremost. You got to acknowledge the excitement of starting fresh. So it's normally to feel super motivated. Like you're going to be on cloud nine when you do, when you set a new goal, when you decide to do something new, when you're going to start a new fitness journey, when you're going to prep for that half marathon you got coming up, 
whatever that may be for you. It may be an Ironman. It may be, uh, I don't know, a new goal at work or something. You're going to be pumped up. You're going to be ready to go. But there's a risk to that. The risk is you don't want to go too hard, too fast because this can lead to burnout. It can also, in fitness, it can lead to injury. You can get yourself hurt if you're trying to do too much at once. Your body's not used to it. Your body's not ready for that. You're going to hurt yourself. So you got to build yourself up to it. There's progression. So today we're going to talk about how to build that progression properly and uh, without overdoing it so you don't get injured. So step one, you want to start slowly and gradually build up. I mean, obviously, like this is a given, but you got to pace yourself. Your body needs time to adapt to new physical demands, especially if you're starting from scratch. Like if you're starting from nothing, like anything you do more than what you were doing before, it's going to be like a stress on your body. It's going to, that's that stimulus you're getting from working out. So you don't have to do a lot. Like you don't have to go, like if you never ran, you don't have to go run 10 miles to, to benefit from it. Like you only need to run like a, a half of a mile at a time. Like you start slow. Like you don't have to go do three miles. Like literally just start run, walk a quarter mile at a time. Like it's, you got to start slow. If you're new to fitness, if you're running, like if you're doing fitness, literally just start three days a week in the gym. Like don't start and decide you're going to start working out and start going five, six days a week. Because honestly, your body's not ready for that. Your body's not prepared for that. You're not going to be able to recover. You're going to be stupid sore. Like literally just start with three days a week. That's all you need first starting out. And then you'll progr you're progressively build that up over time. So if you're, if you're race training, if you're running for like a race, if you're training for a race or something, I would begin short, short manageable runs. So 20, 30 minutes max, two to three miles. But obviously you're not going to be able to run that whole time. It's going to be kind of a run walk thing. And then you just gradually increase this over time. No more. The rule is for running is no more than 10% per week that you want to increase. So I don't know how to do the math on that. But like say you ran a mile the first week, you don't want to increase it by more than 10% the next week. So you would do a mile and 10%, whatever that works out to be. I don't know. You don't want to go from a mile to straight to running two miles and then straight to running four miles. You just increase it by 10% each week. And that's, that's a good number to stick to. Also rest and recovery days. These are huge. They're essential to avoid overtraining and to allow your body to recover, especially first starting out. Like if you're not doing anything at all, when you first start out doing something, your body's going to freak out. It's going to be like, Hey, what is this? And you're going to be sore. So you got to let your body recover. And this is how you get stronger. This is how you build up. Your body recovers and it overcomes your body breaking down. So that's how that's how it works. That's how you build muscle. It's better, it's better to feel like you could do more at the end of the session than to exhaust yourself too soon. Now, yeah, as you get going as more of like an advanced level lifter or runner, then yeah, you kind of want to exhaust yourself to push yourself, to make yourself grow, to force, force yourself to grow. But starting out, if you're doing that, I guarantee you six months down the road, you ain't going to be working out. You ain't going to be running no more. I promise you. You're going to get too exhausted too quick, and you're going to quit. So no, that leads us to number two. Be realistic. Set realistic goals um, and incremental goals. So break it down. Set small, achievable goals that lead toward your larger goal. For example, instead of I want to run a marathon, break it down into I want to run a 5K in three months. And then after that, I want to run a 10K. You know, so work your way up, build up. It's all about progression goals. So focus on improving endurance, improving strength, your technique, improve your technique incrementally. Um, you're not just going to go from being a couch potato to being a Olympic level runner. That's just not going to happen because you hadn't built that technique. You haven't built the strength or the endurance to get there. So don't don't try to push for immediate results. Fitness takes time. It's something that takes years to perfect. So. Just know that going in, know it, let, know that you're not going to be the best that you can be for, for a year, two, three years. It's going to take time to build it up, but you can, you just got to put in the, the work consistently. And then also avoid comparisons. So everyone's fitness journey is going to be unique. It's going to be different. Avoid comparing yourself to others and especially social media influencers, because you're only seeing the good. You don't see none of the bad. You only see the good stuff. So it's very easy to compare yourself and get yourself down. So just worry about yourself. Don't worry about other people. Like, do you, and that's all you can do. You can't can't worry about other people because you can't. You, you you don't your body don't affect. I mean, you don't affect them. They do them, and you do you. And that's how it works. Step three: Listen to your body. So pay attention to warning signs, and you will get them. Trust me, you will be sore. Soreness is normal, but think about this: pain is not. So if you're if you have pain, that's not normal. You need to know the difference between pain and being sore. You're gonna be sore, and it's gonna hurt. 
but there's a difference between actually being like hurt physically and just being sore. So you got to kind of figure out the difference between those two. Um, some common signs of overtraining is going to be persistent fatigue, muscle pain, uh, irritability, or lack of motivation. So if you're having any of these, it's, you're probably overtraining. I would dial it back a little bit. So tone it back. You're going too hard, too fast, and your body's not prepared for that. So, which, which also leads us to taking your rest seriously. Like you got to take your rest seriously. If you feel very overwhelmed, over fatigued, it's okay to take an extra day off. Like if you miss one day here or there, it's not going to be in the world. It's not going to be a big deal, especially if you need to recover. Like recovery is part of the process. You have to do it. If you're not recovering, you're never going to build, you're never going to progress. So like think of it as part of the process. Like it's part of the plan. So a good tip for that is learn to adjust your plan as needed. So if you're sore one day, you can take a day off and you can just adjust your plan. You don't have to force it. It's being flexible. I mean, if you're if you're extra sore or if you go on vacation or something, you may have to change it up. So be flexible. I know we all like to get in our routines. I'm the same way. I don't like to mess up my routine. But if I do mess it up, say I miss a workout during the week, I'll just move it to Saturday. I'll bump it back on the weekend and do it then. Like it's it's not the big deal. It's not the end of the world. We'll, we'll make and if I can't make it up. I'll just go back to the gym next week. You know what I'm saying? It's not that it's not the end of the world. One workout here or there is not going to make or break you. So step four, focus on proper form and proper technique. So my opinion, I think form is way more important than intensity. Yes, they're both important, but your form is going to um, do better good for you over time than just being going all out like intensity. So whether it's lifting weights or running, Form is critical to prevent injury because if your ego lifting in the gym, you're going to get hurt eventually. And if you're out there just running with whatever technique, you're going to get hurt running because running is hard on the body. So if you're a runner, focus on proper posture, stride, breathing techniques. If you're a lifter, start with lower weights, perfect your form, and then you can increase your weight. Honestly, I would say start with body weight workouts. Don't do no weights at first. You literally could probably do body weight workouts for like a year without ever adding a weight and still see progress. Like there's so so many different ways to do it to start out with without getting hurt. And also consider working with the coach or watching tutorials on YouTube, which is what I do, to ensure your form is correct from the start. So I learned pretty much everything I know from YouTube. So don't hesitate to go to YouTube and look up how to do a lift or the proper technique of a certain lift. Nope, there's no shame in that at all whatsoever. It's actually a good thing it's gonna teach you and you can learn from it so number five prioritize recovery and flexibility work so stretching and mobility this is huge i always say if you don't use it you'll lose it so if you're not flexing your body if you're not putting your body in those stretch positions in those weird positions that you normally wouldn't do on a day-to-day basis you're going your body eventually is going to forget how to do that like it's not going to do it no more so you need to make sure you're stretch stretching incorporate dynamic stretching before your workouts, and then do static stretching after your workouts. This is going to help prevent stiffness and improve your mobility. So dynamic stretching is like a warm up you would do before. It's kind of I don't know how to the best way to explain it, but it's well. Let me. So static stretching is when you're just being still and you're holding a stretch. So like stand, touching your. I mean, putting your feet together and touching your toes. Like that's a static stretch, or like just pulling your arm across your body. Um, Anything you're doing, being still, that's static. Dynamic, you're moving. You're like up, swinging, doing like, I don't know, like jumping jacks or swinging your, like twisting your body and stuff. Like these are dynamic stretches. Um, so like that's what you would do to warm up. And then static stretching is what you would do to cool down. You could even do some uh, like yoga or foam rolling, um, the massage guns. These are all going to be good for recovery. You can even go get like a professional massage, ice baths, things like this. I would highly recommend doing these recovery um, techniques, especially on your off days. And then and then another two important things is your sleep and your hydration. So adequate sleep, seven to nine hours, and proper hydration are going to be crucial for muscle recovery and muscle performance. I mean, I think we all know that at this point. But when, you're, when you first start working out and running and stuff, that's going to be even more important because your body's going to be tearing itself down, recovering, recovering. So you need the, the, that extra sleep and the hydration. Step six, balance your workouts. So I would recommend cross training. So don't just do one or the other. I would mix up your workouts to avoid overuse injuries and burnout. Yeah, you need to do the same workouts so you can get better at them and you can progress. But 
if you do them too much, you may do you may get some overuse injuries in them. So if you're training for a race, add some strength training, add some swimming, some cycling to your routine. There's different ways to switch it up so you don't get injured from overuse. Take your recovery day. Use your recovery days as like active recovery days. So opt for low impact activities like walking, light swimming, stretching. Do these on your recovery days. And then avoid doing the same workout every day. Variety is key for long-term sustainability because you will get bored of the same exact workouts over and over and over again. You'll eventually quit doing them or quit going because you're just tired of doing the same thing. So it's good to switch it up every now and then. Step number seven, know the importance of mental rest. So don't feel guilty about a rest day. Like rest is part of the journey. It's part of the process. It's not a setback. So don't feel guilty about it. And I'm, this is gets me, I'm, I'm guilty about this. I don't like missing. I don't. And I'm hard on myself when I do. Like I, I'll get mad at myself like, dang, like why didn't I go? Um, but like I said, I work out in the morning. So if I miss the morning, I go in the afternoon. Or if I miss a day during the week, I go on the weekend. So I'm bad about this. I don't, I don't really um, give myself some slack sometimes. But now that I'm off the body prep, bodybuilding prep, I am taking Sundays completely off now. Like I'm not working out cardio nothing so i am giving myself more rest time now so this will help should help me with this and also help with my my recovery as well you got to use you got to shift your mindset a little bit so instead of instead of viewing your recovery days as integral to your progress um i mean view your recovery days as integral to the progress and not as lost time a recovery day is not a day that you miss use it as progress for recovery so you can even use like meditation and mindfulness pra- mindfulness practices to help you manage that stress and that and improve your focus on on recovery. Step number eight: stay consistent, not extreme. So consistency over intensity all day. It's going to win. Consistency is always going to win at the end of the day. It's better to be consistent with moderate effort than to go all out for a week and quit due to burnout. So if you go too hard. Yeah, it's going to feel good. You're going to think you're killing it, thinking you're doing your thing, and you are, and that's good. But guess what? That's not sustainable. You're not going to be doing that six months to a year down the road. You're going to fall off. You're going to get tired. You're going to get hurt, and it's going to it's going to catch up to you eventually. So aim for steady progress with a weekly plan rather than pushing hard too hard on individual days. So keep track of your progress and celebrate small victories to maintain motivation. So that's... I, I like to preach consistency over anything. You just be consistent. Whatever, however many days you have set to go to the gym that day, I mean that week, go that many days, period. Like, no excuses. Like, you got to go get it done. If you miss one day, go the next day. Like, it's not that hard. Just be consistent. And over over a long period of time, that consistency will pay off. Like, you will get there. Like, I've been I've been working out for 11 years being consistent. So, it's it's finally starting to, to compound on top of each other, and I'm starting to see some pretty good results now. But it's taken me... A long time of being consistent to get there. You don't have to absolutely destroy your body every time you go into the gym to see results, especially if you're a beginner. You're just starting out. Anything you do more than what you were doing before, is you're going to see results. So I would literally start body weight workouts. You don't need to get in, get in there and throw a bunch of weight on the bar because it's it's only going to hinder your progress in the long run. Yeah, you, you may think you're doing it and you may think you're killing it, um, but it's not doing you any good. So think about this. The harder you go from the beginning, the harder it's going to be for you to progress later on down the road. Because when you when your body, I'm trying to think the best way to put this, when, you, when you're working out, you're basically stressing your body out. So what happens? You stress your body out, and then your body thinks, oh, no, I need to survive, so I'm going to build myself up stronger to overcome that stress. So it's going to get stronger. So think about the weights or the stress, and you get stronger so you can lift the weights. Well... If you go into the gym, you start bench pressing 225 from the get-go, your body's going to build up to that 225, and you're going to be able to do it. But you're only going to get, like, you're only going to get so big. You're only going to get a little bit stronger. It's not really a good way to put it. But you, you can get better results over time by doing less weights. Like, instead of starting with 225, start with just, like, 95 pounds. Let your body break down, recover, break down, recover. Because you can get the same results with less weight. That's what I'm trying to say. So instead of breaking your body down, with 225 you could break your body down with 95 and then it's so you're lifting less weights but getting the same results so you can go from 95 to 105 to 125 to 135 
and you're making results the whole time. But if you just start out at 225, like is one, it's gonna be hard to get there, but you're gonna plateau and you're working harder. Like you're lifting 225, working out with that instead of working out with 135 and getting the same results. So that's why I say like, don't start out running 10 miles, start out running a half a mile and then work your way up. Cause you can, you're gonna get results down there at a half a mile, just like you would if you were get running 10 a mile, like 10, 10 miles, you would get results both ways. So why not start with the easier thing and get the same results with the easier stress on your body and then work your way up. I hope that makes sense. It's kind of hard to explain. Uh, if it don't make sense, shoot me a message and we'll talk about it and I'll try to explain it the best I can to you. But yeah, basically don't work harder if you don't have to is what I'm trying to say. Like you can do it. You can get the same results by working a little bit easier and then you work your way up. There's no point in starting at level five when you can start at level one because it's going to be easier. So yeah, just to wrap it all up, start slow, set realistic goals, focus on proper form, listen to your body, and prioritize your recovery. That's how you got to do it. The key to long-term success is just being patient and being consistent. Don't rush the process. So trust the process, don't rush the process. That's kind of like the title of the podcast right here. Um, you don't need to overdo it. You ain't got to overdo it because let's be honest, you're not going to keep doing it. The whole goal of starting a finish journey or starting – like a race training or whatever it is, is to so you're still doing it later on. Like if you just if you go in too hard, you're eventually going to give up. You're not going to be doing it a year down the road. So you got to set yourself up to do something that's sustainable to keep doing it for forever or however long you're training for. Because if you overdo it, I'll, you're not gonna you're gonna quit. I promise. Like you're gonna overdo it. You're gonna get injured. You're gonna get burned out. You're not gonna be motivated. Um, something like that is gonna happen. So you're not gonna keep doing it. So there's no point. And diving, because like I know a lot of people, they like to go in head first, all in. Because like I know I'm kind of the same way. Like I'm all in or all out. Like I under, I understand that, and a lot of other people are like that too. So they go in too hard. Like they go in the gym five, six days a week, lifted a bunch of heavy weight, and they're not focusing on what they should be focusing on starting out. Like when you first go in the gym, you should be starting out on learning the proper techniques, learning your different workouts, learning about your nutrition doing body weight workouts. You don't even need weights at the, at the beginning. You can start working out in your living room and see great results in your living room with no weights. You need to learn the proper techniques and the proper progression because it's going to do you better in the long run. Like if you go into the gym and you start doing squats from day one with weight on your back, you're probably not doing the technique right technique. So as you start adding weights over time, when you start doing a lot heavy weight, you're going to get yourself hurt because you're doing – a lot of weight with the wrong technique. So learn it while you're doing either no weight or low weights and it'll do you better in the long run. Like as you progress, you'll see a lot more progress. So yeah, just don't 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 try to overdo it is all I'm trying to say. Start slow, trust the process, get you a training plan, get you a nutrition plan, like whatever if you're if you're working out in the gym, get you a, a good little split to use. Um I like to do push pull leg. That's an easy one to follow. Um, if you're running, if you're trying to do a, a race, a 5k marathon, whatever it is, get you download a running app and you use a training plan and follow the plan to a T. Don't do more than what the plan says. Don't do less. Literally follow it to a plan, uh, follow it to a T. Um, most plans are structured a certain way for a reason because they work and they allow your body to recover. They have built in recovery days. So if you have a, if your plan says you're off on this day, take that day off because it's there for a reason. Don't just say, Oh, well, I'm. I'm going to go get another run in on this day because I feel good today, you know. But And sometimes that's okay, it's, especially if you're more developed down the road, you've been doing it for years, you're advanced, and that's okay. But when you're first starting out, I would just do what the plan says because it's probably structured that way for a reason, and you have an off day that day to let your body recover. So trust it. Don't think you're you're not doing enough. You will see results, especially as a beginner. But, yeah, that's all I got for y'all today. Thank y'all so much for tuning in. I hope this podcast helped y'all. Um, you're listening to this on Monday, hopefully. So y'all have a great week. Attack your work. Attack your fitness journey. Go all in. Do y'all thing, And enjoy the week. If you're in the car, be safe. Wear your seatbelt. Other than that, hope y'all have a great day. Peace, love, protein.